Welcome to the channel, I trust that you're doing well. My name is Kyle and in this video I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use Coinbase in advanced mode. I'll show you how to toggle Coinbase from basic into advanced, I'll get you familiar with the pairings and user interface, or I'll show you how to buy and sell crypto using limit orders, market orders, and even how to manage your risk by setting a stop loss. All of that and more with some tips and tricks along the way. If this is your first time signing up on Coinbase, I've left a link for you in the description of this video as well as in the pinned comment down below. Feel free to sign up to Coinbase using that link and you'll receive 10 bucks worth of free Bitcoin on your first $100 purchase. If you're brand new to Coinbase, I do have a step-by-step -step beginner tutorial on how to use Coinbase in basic mode, so I'll leave a link for that video in the description down below for anybody that might find that helpful. I'll also leave timestamps to this video in the description as well, so feel free to skip ahead to a section that might be most relevant to you. If you need to get signed up, now's a good time to pause the video, get signed up, and I'll see you inside Coinbase. Before we get rolling with this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to toggle Coinbase between light mode and dark mode. To do that, just come up here to the top right hand side of the screen and click on your profile icon. From this drop down menu, click where it says appearance. And in this little pop-up window here is where you can toggle Coinbase between dark mode and light mode. I do prefer dark mode, so I'll be using that for the duration of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and close this out. To toggle Coinbase into advanced mode, simply come over here on the left hand side and click on trade. Up at the top, you'll see we're currently set to simple, so we'll go ahead and select advanced. Now we've toggled Coinbase into advanced mode. And here's where we can find all the pairings on Coinbase. You'll notice up here at the top, they have different market types. So for example, if we clicked on USDT, now all these pairings down below are quoted in Tether. So if we sold a coin using these pairings, we'd be receiving Tether for the sale. If you want to buy a coin using these pairings, you're going to need Tether to make the purchase. If we were to toggle over to BTC, now all these pairings are quoted in Bitcoin. So if we sold a coin using these pairings, we'd be receiving Bitcoin for the sale. And if we want to buy a coin using these pairings, we'll need Bitcoin to make the purchase. And I'll go ahead and set us back to the Tether pairings here. You can add pairings to a watch list. So let's imagine that we want to watch BTC versus Tether, and maybe we want to watch Ethereum versus Tether as well. We'll just come over here to the watch column, and we'll highlight the star beside those pairings, just like so. Now if we come back up here to the top and click on watch list, you can see that we've added those to the watch list. If at any point you want to remove a coin from the watch list, you just come back over here to the watch column and uncheck the star. And as you can see, we've removed them from the watch list. Over here on the right hand side, you'll be able to find the top gainers of the day. And these are the pairings that have been performing the best in the last 24 hours. You can also toggle over to the top losers. And these are the pairings that have been beaten up the most in the last 24 hours. Just up above that, you can find some order management. So if we click on orders, this brings us over to a page where we can view our open orders as well as our order history. You can also find your fees at the top of this page. So if we come up to the top right beside orders, we can click on fees. And here's where you'll find a brief summary of your account and what fees you're currently paying when executing orders. And you can find that right over here on the right hand side. So you can see at the time of recording that the current taker fees is not 0.6. So this is if you're going to be using market orders. And right over here, you'll be able to see your current maker fees. And this is if you'll be placing limit orders on the order books. And we'll be going over order types in this tutorial. Just down below, you'll find the pricing tier. So you can see here, if you're trading with less than $10,000, your taker fee will be not 0.6 and your maker fee will be not 0.4. The more money you're trading with, the more you'll begin to save in fees. So let's head back to the pairings here. So I'm going to click back here at the top left hand side of the screen a couple times. And now we're back to the pairings. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate with the tether pairings. And for this tutorial, I'll simply click on BTC versus tether. And here's the user interface where all the trading happens. Right here, we have the price action chart. And the price action chart is showing us the asset's performance over a selected time frame. You can see in my case here that the chart is currently set to 15 minute intervals. This means that each one of these candlesticks represents 15 minutes worth of trading. We can change the interval by just simply clicking right here where it says 15 minute interval. And from this drop down menu, you can select the time frame that you wish to view. So I'll just go ahead and go to a daily here. Now we're viewing the chart on a daily, so that means each one of these candlesticks represents one day's worth of time. The chart allows traders to observe the historical price action of an asset. 
With this information, traders can look to identify patterns and trends inside the price action in order to develop a bias as to where they think price may go next. Traders can also use the historical price action to identify areas where they may be interested in buying or selling an asset. This technique is called technical analysis. You can find the drawing tools just on the left hand side of the chart. If yours aren't showing, there's a little arrow at the bottom left hand side. If you give it a click, it'll expand and here's where you can find the drawing tools. Beside each one of these tools is another small little arrow. If you give that a click, it'll expand into a drop down menu and here's where you can find even more drawing tools. If you want to add an indicator to the chart, you can find indicators over here in the top right hand side of the chart and you'll see a little tab that says indicators. Give that a click. It becomes a drop down menu and here's where you can access some basic indicators such as the relative strength index, EMA exponential moving averages and more. To add one, just simply click on it. Now you can see that we've added the RSI to the bottom of the chart. To get rid of it, I'll just go ahead and click this little X right here and we've removed it from the chart. When it comes to doing technical analysis, I prefer to use TradingView and I'll go ahead and just drag it into frame like so. And with TradingView, you can simply do a heck of a lot more. I do consider this the gold standard when it comes to technical analysis. You can try TradingView for free, so I'll leave a link for this in the description of the video as well as in the pinned comments down below. Feel free to sign up, try the free version, see if it's a good fit for you, and if you like it, you can always sign up for it later. So I'll go ahead and just pull that out of the way. To the right of the chart, we have the order book. And the order book is showing us where market participants are interested in buying and selling. These market participants are called market makers. And this is because they are providing liquidity to the order book by executing limit orders. When a trader executes a limit order, it becomes visible on the order book for all to see. On the top side of the order book, we have what's called the asks. And these are the price points that market makers are willing to sell, at least for the time being. Down below, we have what's known as the bids. And these are the prices that market makers are willing to pay, at least for the time being. In the price column of the order book, we can see the price point that market participants have placed their orders at. In the middle column of the order book, we can see those orders quoted in BTC, and that's because we're set to BTC versus USDT. If you were trading a different pairing, it'd be quoted in that different asset. And in the amount column, we can see the total amount quoted in USDT. When a trader comes along and executes a market order, they'll be matched up with the best available price from the order book, the trade will be executed, and then visible over here under trade history. Here is where we can see successful trades executed in real time. In the price column of trade history, you can see the price point that the successful trade was executed at. In the amount column, you'll see the amount that was successfully traded, and on the right hand side, you'll see the time that the trade went through at. And over here under the chart, you have what's known as the depth of chart. And in a nutshell, the depth of chart is a visualization of the order book. The x-axis of the depth of chart is showing us the price point of the asset. On the y-axis of the depth of chart, it's showing us the amount of the asset on the order book up to that price point. For example, let's imagine that we're considering a buy order. Maybe we're considering buying somewhere down around 23,720. If you look over at the y-axis of the chart, you're going to see how much Bitcoin worth of orders are ahead of yours. These orders are going to have to fill before price action reaches your order, executing it into a position. When the markets are quite volatile, you'll see that jumping around quite a bit. And that's because orders are constantly being filled as well as being added to the order book. But it'll give you a general idea of the volume of orders ahead of yours. To the inverse of that, Let's imagine that we wanted to place a sell order, maybe somewhere around 24,304. Once again, if we look over at the Y axis of the chart, we can see how much Bitcoin worth of orders are ahead of ours. These orders are going to have to fill before price action reaches our sell point. And up here at the top right hand side is where you'll find your order panel, where you can be a buyer or a seller of an asset using limit orders, market orders, and setting stop limits. And I'll demonstrate all of these here. So let's go ahead and start with a limit order. Limit orders allow the trader to be a bit more strategic by choosing a price they wish to buy or sell an asset. You will also pay a smaller fee for using a limit order. And this is because you're placing the order onto the order book for all to see. So in other words, you're providing liquidity to the order book. Typically, exchanges like to incentivize traders to provide liquidity to the book. This will make you a market maker, and because of this, you will pay a smaller fee. The first step to placing a limit order is choosing a price point that you wish to be a buyer or a seller of the asset. 
So let's come on over here to the chart. Let's imagine that we're viewing this chart through the lens of a bull. We can see that Bitcoin has been playing out a little bit of a bear market rally lately. We see it started right back here when Bitcoin did a higher low on price action as opposed to right back here. This led to a higher high as opposed to this right here. That gave us a higher low right here as opposed to back here. Then another higher high. And recently we got another higher low right here. So we can see that the bulls are stepping in sooner and sooner every single time Bitcoin wants to pull back. So maybe Bitcoin's setting up to make a move to the upside. Perhaps we're thinking Bitcoin's gonna have one more shallow pullback before making its move to the upside. Maybe it wants to pull back somewhere in this area right here. So just for fun, I'll grab a horizontal off the drawing tools here, and let's go ahead and mark this area just like so. Now we can see on the Y axis of the chart that there's a price point that correlates to that horizontal, coming in at 23,371. So let's come up to limit price and let's go ahead and type that in. 23,371. Next, you'll need to choose the amount of the asset that you wish to purchase at that price point. And there's a few ways to go about this. You can come down here to the amount box, and here's where you can type in a specific amount of the asset that you wish to purchase at that price level. So in my case, I could do something like this, or you could come down here to the total box, and here's where you could type in the amount you wish to spend at that price level. So in my case, I could maybe do something like that. And the third way is by using this slider bar to allocate a percentage of your available funds into the asset. So obviously if I had that set to 50%, that means I would be entering 50% of my available funds into the asset if my price target is hit. You'll notice at the bottom of the order panel, you'll be able to see your available balances. So in my case here, we can see my available BTC balance of 0.05 BTC. And just below that, we see my tether balance of 153. So you'll know exactly what you're working with. So for this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and type in 100 tether. The next thing I like to do is click right here where it says advanced. In the execution box, I switch this from allow taker to post only. This ensures that I pay a smaller fee if my order fails. Typically when I use limit orders, I like to make sure I'm gonna save on fees for doing so. Once you have the order set up the way that you want it, you just simply click on buy BTC. Now we've placed that order onto the order book. So if price action is to retrace down to our limit price here, our order will fill and will buy BTC. We can also see the order down here under the order tab. And over here on the right hand side under status, we can see that our order is currently open. If at any point you want to remove this order from the order book, you just click right here where it says open. This is going to bring up your order details and all the way down here at the bottom, you can click on cancel order. Now we've removed that order off of the order book. We can also use limit orders to sell our cryptocurrency. To do that, we'd come back here to the order panel, make sure we're set to limit. Now we'll switch from buy to sell. The first step is to choose a price point that we want to sell our crypto at. So let's come back over here to the chart. Now let's imagine that we're viewing this chart through the lens of a bear. Maybe Bitcoin does want to pop up a little bit here, but perhaps that's going to give us a selling opportunity before Bitcoin makes another drive to the downside. Perhaps Bitcoin wants to pop up somewhere around this level here. We see a little bit of a wick tagging that level here, and we can see a pretty obvious breakdown in price action right here. So let's go ahead and just mark that out with a horizontal. like so. Good enough for this demonstration. Now we can see there's a price point that correlates to that horizontal coming in at 26,551. Maybe we're thinking to ourselves, you know what, Bitcoin might pop up here, but if it hits this level, we want to sell and get out of the way because maybe we think Bitcoin's going to come up here, reject, and then move to a lower low. So let's go ahead and put this price point into limit price. Come up here to the order panel and let's type that in. 26,551. Next, we need to choose an amount of the crypto that we wish to sell. And of course, we can see our balance right down below at the bottom of the order panel. For this demonstration, I'll just go ahead and use the slider bar, just do something like that. Once you have the order set up the way that you want it, you click on sell. Now you've placed that order on the order book. If price action was to pop up and hit this level, the order would fill and you'd be selling your crypto. Once again, you'll be able to view your order down here under orders. And right over here, we can see that the status of this order is currently open. If we want to cancel it, we just simply click where it says open, and then we would cancel the order. Now I've removed it from the order book. 
So the benefit of using limit orders is that it will give you the opportunity to be a bit more strategic when buying and selling. With a little bit of patience, this will give you the opportunity to maximize the value of your buys and sells. And you'll also save on fees. There are a few things to consider when choosing to use a limit order. So in our scenario where we're looking to sell here, maybe price comes up to our sell level, fills our order, and then just keeps going to the upside and we miss out on all those extra gains. In our buying scenario, maybe price doesn't reach our entry level. Maybe price just wants to break out right here and runs away without us. Or maybe price comes down, fills our order, but then continues to the downside, putting us at a loss. So it's always a good idea to consider proper risk management by using a stop loss. And I will show you how to do that in this tutorial. First, I'll cover how to place a market order. So let's go ahead and just get rid of these horizontals here. And now let's head back up here to the order panel and we're going to toggle from limit to market. Placing market orders is really simple, but there are a couple things to consider when using market orders. Market orders will execute immediately at the best available price. This will make you a market taker because you're removing liquidity from the order book versus adding to the order book by using a limit order. Because of this, you will pay a higher fee. Another thing to be aware of is what's known as slippage. We all know that cryptocurrency can get moving very quickly, whether that's to the upside or to the downside. If an asset begins to melt to the upside, all the asks in the order book will be getting chewed up really quick. If an asset begins to dump and waterfall to the downside, all the bids in the order book will be getting chewed up very quickly. This means that you may not get the price point that you intended, and it could diminish the amount of the asset that you're buying if you're on the buy side, or it could diminish the amount of funds you're receiving for selling the asset if you're on the sell side. Remember, a market order will execute at the best available price. So if the order book is getting chewed up, you may not get the price point that you thought you would get. Typically, this isn't an issue unless the market is really volatile. Slippage could also affect you if you're buying and selling in large amounts. The larger amounts that you're trading with, the more orders you yourself will eat up from the order book. This could change your average entry price and cause the slippage of your order to be more pronounced, especially if the order book is thin. When trading with smaller amounts, slippage is less of a concern, as long as the market isn't extremely volatile. So it's always good to be aware of slippage. And if you come down here on the order panel, you'll see that Coinbase will even estimate your slippage for you when you're placing your market order. Aside from that, placing a market order is really simple. You simply choose if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. You choose the amount of asset that you wish to buy or sell, and then you just simply place your order. So for this demonstration, I'll go ahead and be a buyer and I'll just buy 100%. So we'll go buy BTC. And I've successfully bought BTC at the best available price from the order book. You can set a stop limit order using Coinbase Advanced, and I'll demonstrate using Bitcoin versus USDT. The first thing we need to do is come up here at the top right hand side of the screen to the order panel. We'll toggle it from limit to stop limit. Then we'll move from buy to sell. The first thing we need to do is choose a stop price. This will be a condition that tells Coinbase to place a limit order to sell our coins. So let's head on over here to the chart. And just for fun, I'll grab a horizontal from the drawing tools and I'll go ahead and mark out an area of support, maybe somewhere right around in here. Good enough for this demonstration. When we look left, we can see a wick test of that level right here. We can see that a couple wicks got down to that horizontal here before the bulls tried to push price back to the upside. And currently we see that level trying to hold us support once again right here. And perhaps we're thinking to ourselves, you know, if support breaks here, maybe it's going to become probable that Bitcoin's going to move to much lower price levels. So let's set a condition somewhere below support to tell Coinbase to place a limit order to sell our coins. Maybe we're looking at this wick right here. So let's go ahead and mark that with another horizontal, something like this. Now we can see on the Y axis of the chart that there's a price point correlating to that horizontal coming in at 18,098. So let's come back up here to our order panel and let's put a stop price slightly lower than that price point. Perhaps we'll go 18,010. We don't want to be too tight because we don't want price action to come down there, find support and sell our coins and then bounce to the upside. So we want to be slightly lower than that just to give it a little breathing room. 
Now we want to choose a price point for Coinbase to place that limit order to sell our coins. So let's head back over here to the chart. And let's just imagine that we're looking at this wick right down here. And let's go ahead and mark that with a horizontal, something like this. Now we can see on the Y axis of the chart that that wick has a price point coming in at 17,611. So we'll come back up here to the order panel and let's type that into limit price, 17,611. Next, you need to choose the amount of the asset that you wish to sell if your limit order gets placed. You can do that by typing in a custom amount right here, or alternatively, you could just use this slider bar. For this demonstration, I'll go ahead and slide this to 100%. Once you get the order panel set up the way that you want it, simply click on sell. Then you'll get a stop limit alert, confirming the details of your order. In my case here, if the last trade price goes below 18,010, an order to sell Bitcoin will be placed at 17,611. If the details are what you intended, you just simply click on place order. Now we've placed our stop limit. If price action gets down to $18,010, Coinbase is going to place a limit order to sell our Bitcoin at 17,611 or better from the order book. If at any point you want to cancel this order, just come down below here, right under status, you'll see it says active. Simply click on active, and then in this pop-up window, click right here where it says cancel order. Now I've canceled that stop limit. And there you have it, your introduction to using Coinbase in advanced mode. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like and hit subscribe. I have plenty of more useful tutorials on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for popping by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.